Alex Answer here. It is May 3rd in the year 2018. So there's a new YouTube series. It's something that they're using to promote YouTube Red. And it is called Cobra Kai. The Karate Kid Lives On. Most people know that this is a YouTube series that is continuing the tradition of the Karate Kid. Of which there were multiple sequels to the, uh, the best-selling uh, 1984 classic Karate Kid. Whether people are fans of the martial arts or not. And uh, of course that was a, a time in American history when the martial arts were becoming a lot more popular. But still in its infancy... Uh, we've come a long way in recent decades. But, yeah, it's known as one of the more inspiring films of a person taking on the schoolyard bully. Uh, it's also a story of uh, basically being an outsider uh, as Daniel goes to uh, Southern California and deals with uh, Johnny the bully and defeats him in the end. So the series picks up on where, where the movies leave off. Where, where Johnny's uh, 1984 appearance leaves off. Uh, a couple things I uh, wrote down here with regards to kind of the plot. So Johnny, of course, marketing purposes here, think like a marketer, think like an advertiser. So they're looking to uh, um, boost the value of both YouTube and Google. And there's a little bit of uh, genius behind scripting something and having the licensing for it and having the money to hire the actors to boost something like YouTube Red. Johnny exemplifying the, uh, the problems that a lot of men may have today that uh, live through the 80s. You know, so issues with, uh, well, with the police. He's beat up by the police after he comes to the aid of a young man. Uh, issues with women. Uh, anger with regards to um, immigration issues. Uh, he has some... Uh, not so great experiences at a few convenience stores to where someone hands him his food without using proper proper sanitation gloves, things of that nature. You know, it's just a little bit of the modern uh, Southern California urban blight thing there that perhaps a lot of people could relate to, the urban blight of today's day and age. Uh, issues with women comes up over and over and over again. Um, telling someone he didn't want to be uh, bitched at, and then that got turned around that he called someone a bitch, so he loses his job. And so already from the get-go, it touches the nerve of like the angry dude who has wrinkles in his face, who's like literally uh, drinking and driving. Uh, we could see Johnny drinking and driving, and uh, bad luck comes upon him to where some girls in a car um, total his car by slamming into it when uh, he was parked. You know, he was sitting there uh, feeling sorry for himself at a park bench. I, I, I've been there. And uh, he's drinking some alcohol. And, um, you know, some kids uh, slam into his car. And so his car is totaled. Uh, old people problems is how my friend interpreted this. What did you think? What did you call this? When you were interpreting these different things that were coming on, like you know, the Johnny character that was, because they want to get you hooked. Because you get, you get episode one for free, and you get episode two for free. So they, they want you to identify also, and I'm just speaking about this neutrally, not with anger, nor as a fan, but just how they're using marketing of today's man problems to market Johnny's character. Your observations? It seems like it was a show about a midlife crisis, because all the people that saw The Karate Kid in the, uh, the movie when it came out were probably kids themselves, right? Just like Karate Kid. We were talking about the price spans of generation. So I was four when it came out. But also think about people that were like 14 when it came out in 1984. So like a spanning a male generation of 80s, 90s. Because that movie touches so many people. And now there's so many men with problems now. That why not, right? Bring. I'm just suggesting this. Proposing this. They'll use the Karate Kid and then blend it with a lot of problems that are going on today with men. And then make it like you know this YouTube Red series out of it. And bling bling. Cha-ching. Yeah, it's like the evolution, like when you're a kid, your most uh, highest worry is probably like a tournament or a soccer game mm -hmm. and bullies, but then when you get older, like the series, um, now with the current series, all everyone's grown up now and they all have like mid midlife crisis issues, um, you know, not having jobs and what else, like they're still bullying each other. They're really playing up his negative experiences with... Uh immigrants on a, on a little bit of a level with some of those convenience store uh, scenes. It was a pretty, you know, seemed really uh, solidified in there that he was having issues. Well, uh, 
uh, with with yeah. other people. In the original movie, there was a contrast because the uh, the bully. Uh, they flipped the it. Opponent, yeah. Yeah, that's popular these days to flip the story. So now Johnny's like the the the, the underdog underdog guy who's kind of cool, who has kind of an appealing type of persona, I guess maybe to the average viewer. Whereas Daniel isn't so cool. He's no longer the victim. Um, Danny is no longer being run into the ditch anymore. Danny has his own uh, car company, LaRusso Cars. Mm -hmm. So what happens with Johnny is Johnny mm -hmm. ends up having to, uh, uh, his vehicle ends up being towed to uh, the LaRusso uh, uh, car center. And so he's like, no, no, I did not want my car to be fixed by that dude that kicked me in the face. And so there's the whole type of awkwardness between, uh, between Danny and Johnny. And Danny's really, like, douchey. Like, I was looking down the comment yeah. section, like, oh, man, they totally flipped it. Now Danny's the douche, and, like, Johnny's cool. So, yeah, now one has, one has money, and the other one doesn't have as much Yeah, money. now one has money, and the other one's, like, an alcoholic who's drinking and driving, who used to be a badass at one point, who, who now is, like, like, as I said in one scene, he's beat up by the police, when he literally comes to the aid of somebody else. But it seems like... Um, his character grows on people because people could see that he's down and out from all these things and he has an alcohol problem and his vehicle was just trashed. But then he decides he's going to open up Cobra Kai, uh, you know, and he's going to teach this guy um, the principles. Strike first, strike hard, no mercy, sir. Which is kind of probably a big mantra to yeah. credit kit the original, to bring it back, that same mantra, which is... Not necessarily very legal. You can also end up uh, in jail if you're the person that strikes first too. So there isn't really that type of disclaimer yeah, so either. Like, I'm just throwing that in as I have lived. He hasn't grown out of that whole... You know, right, but people should know that too, first. that in the actual day and age of the real world, uh -huh. the person that strikes first is the person that's going to be charged with assault. I mean, there is, there is uh, some realistic element to hitting the guy first. But um, we also are in this YouTube culture and day and age where people are just running around programmed. Oh, and so I'm not, yeah, I'm not overly suggesting that it's predictive programming or mind control, uh, but just that this is a side talk. Um, I notice a lot of things in pop culture basically promote criminal behavior. And I'm all about martial arts and I don't want to deviate too much, but strike first, strike hard, no mercy, sir. Uh, you know, that was typically associated with the villains. And I was already noting in other videos before I watched this Karate Kid remake that MMA is like the modern Cobra Kai. There are a lot of people that are into martial arts now that just want to hurt people that don't care about the respect part of the martial arts or respect your opponent. So to see them popularize Cobra Kai in the day and age of martial arts being co-opted, I find just a little bit to be interesting, kind of like a parallel plot there. Mm -hmm. you know, now that martial arts aren't so popular, but UFC is of ground and pound and things of that nature. It seems kind of like perfect timing for Johnny to be a hero archetype. Make him more of a... Uh, well, these days you can't really just hit first because with all the cell phones, someone can just take a video of you. I think it might have... That's going to look great before a jury. Yeah, like back then <laughs> there weren't that many cell phones, but you could probably hit first and get away with it. Well, you know, the knockout game is hitting first. And the knockout game, the knockout game is, is no mercy, sir. So how do we... How do we remove the strike for a strike card, no mercy, sir, from the knockout game? Well, the knockout game, the person that's getting hit doesn't suspect it, anything. But right. at least in the other version, you're getting into a fight. So going back to the general TV show, the idea is to get somebody hooked by hitting those button issues. So we, so we hit uh, issues with uh, other people in his community. Uh, police brutality, also a common issue. Um, deceptive women. Uh, uh, being screwed over by a driver. There were other issues that might have been hitting on the modern uh, economics and reality of today's day and age. And so having your car towed, being shocked by the price, having it being taken somewhere where you really don't want it to be taken, and just other things that get a person um, uh, pulling their hair out. And this is also a time where there's a lot of commentary about people fleeing California, just on a side note. This is taking place in California. So it's not just the decline in Johnny's life, I mean, it, it's kind of hinting at that the decline of California to a certain degree. Southern California, increasing crime problems. Just everyone leaving to go to other states um, to get away Whether from Whether they leave or stay, 
Yeah. Doesn't does it matter? Just the popularization of the California problem per se, or California tensions, or California on fire, or they leave or stay. You know, there's people that stay that just continue to make movies about California problems. <laughs> is it the California dreaming, or is it the California nightmares? So yeah, they want us to live vicariously through others, and it was kind of interesting because on YouTube there was already some other videos where. Um, Johnny's the good guy and Danny's the guy that comes into town and steps on his turf and whatnot. And uh, it's almost like the YouTube producers got ideas from independent YouTube content creators that were messing around with different things. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that like to incorporate Hollywood movies into their YouTube videos. So this really could be the beginning of a whole new level of, of YouTube Red series based on Hollywood movies that have cult-like followings. Yeah. It's an exciting time for pop culture in the new world order. Well, all the people that saw the movies are now adults. They're right. 30 With problems. And money. So, right. I mean, they will... And YouTube addictions and they obsessions. So, this is a way you can do it, right? They're not going to tell you any truth. They're not going to talk to you about what's going on. You're not going to be bothered down with, with geopolitics. And it was a great 80s soundtrack. Did you catch that? Did you catch the, yeah, the, the music? It was... Not you're not a big 80s buff like I am. <laughs> But it, for anyone that was really into, like, those memories of the old days, how, you know, America was great once, you know, that type of a thing. And the good old 80s compared to, like, now and things of that nature, it's definitely a movie that is set for success for today's audience members. Absolutely outstanding. So we have the snow outside, and it is May 3rd. 